part of the healing process from the scars of the Nigerian Civil War has been the establishment of the National War Museum in Umahia, the Abia State Capital. Established in 1985, the museum preserves the highest collection of Nigerian Civil War weapons. 35 years after, the museum has become one of the biggest tourist attractions in the entire Southeast. Our correspondent, E. Tokbe Kutei, visited the facility and now reports. The National War Museum sits on a landmass of about 3,700 square meters and located in Ebite Amafo community in Umaya North local government area of Abia State. It houses the famous shortwave radio transmission of the defunct voice of Biafra. On the right side, and on the left. The curator of Messi Adwaka says the museum has three galleries that covers traditional warfare during the pre-colonial and colonial era, the armed forces, and the Nigerian Civil War weapon galleries. This is the bunker that houses the defunct voice of Biafra, shortwave radio transmission. We move down the almost 30 feet bunker. Pictures of protagonists of the war flood the staircase. So they look past the felt because of their profuse bunker. It's a hideout. We are the, uh, where Biafran stays. Because that time, this place was a jungle. Nobody knows that something of this nature was located here. It's a hideout. It also has a, a trench that connects them, from, connects them from here to Ojuku bunker. So just communicate from here to the Ojuku bunker. On display are obsolete military weapons and artifacts, which include the Biafran armored cars, also known as Red Devil, MF 19B small bomber aircraft, anti aircraft gun launcher, squid mortar MK 4 anti submarine gun, a Nigerian Navy ship used during the war, torpedoes, and the famous Obunigwe launcher, amongst others. We are actually calling on government, even though we are government, so public servants under the government, to at least step up their awareness creation, their running cost uh, release, their empowerment uh, packages financially. For some of us who didn't witness the civil war, for the fact that we were not born at that time, the stories we read may not be fully appreciated without visiting the National War Museum here in Umwaya. The National War Museum is a major tourist attraction in the state, as visitors of all class visit between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Look at the, the devastating effect. So Museum officials are more concerned about giving a facelift to the facility with a high economic value. Chief Emmanuel Iwayan is a war veteran. The elder statesman tells us that most of the war weapons used by the defunct Biafra during the Civil War were manufactured by the soldiers themselves, including himself. Biafra was blockaded by land and sea. So Biafra had no choice but to produce these arms here. He wants an attempt by any group of persons to return to the bloody path he once witnessed. I think really that the best option and the best choice for Nigerians is for us to live together, for us to determine to live together and to abhor and avoid all these things that will create problems among us. Certainly, the effect of war on any nation's development cannot be overemphasized. For a country to attain sustainable growth, peace, unity and stability is key. Eyitokwe Kutei, Channel's Television News. And from there, we take a look at some business news for the day. Here's BC Adebayo. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank.
Thanks, Ejioma. West African countries, especially Nigeria, should be expecting an expansion of trade and investments from Turkey as the country moves to sign all pending agreements in this regard. The Turkish delegation, led by the Minister of Trade, Rusha Pelian, in the company of Nigeria's Minister for Industry, Trade and Investment, Adeni Adebayo, stated this after a closed door meeting with Vice President Yemi Oshibajo in Abuja. Uh, to extend our uh, country relations and the more economically, trade, cultural and the friendship relation. We are giving uh, great importance our relationship with Nigeria and uh, we see that uh, a very big, uh, great uh, economy or African countries, West African countries and uh, also we want to cooperate with the ECOWAS countries and uh, we uh, we are willing to have the trade and economic uh, uh, partnership agreement with ECOWAS and uh, we are waiting the kind contribution uh, from Nigeria as, as well. We are willing to have to increase our trade and the investment uh, mutually. There are some pending agreement had been signed before or going to be signed. There are several agreements between us and we have agreed with the ministers that we are going to have more often visit each other and the business form together with our business people. We have very much pleased that the Nigerian and the Turkish business people, they are very much interested in doing more business in between and investment. Meanwhile, the United States has reiterated commitments to contribute to a stronger culture of entrepreneurship in Nigeria. And that's according to the U.S. Consul General Claire Pierangelo at an event in Lagos, where she noted that Nigeria's entrepreneurs play a vital role in the growth of economies in the West African sub-region and the prosperity of the continent. Ms. Pierangelo says Nigeria's young population represents a tremendous source of productive labor and an extremely attractive market for a variety of products and services. The U.S. Consul adds that her country remains committed to help Nigeria maximize entrepreneurship opportunities through strategic alliances to promote economic development. Now, losses from Nigerian breweries, Dagote Cement and MTN Nigeria led to the first day of declines at the Nigerian stock market today, pushing the old share index down 1.18%. Here's Layo Adegoke with a summary of today's trading activities. Thank you for joining us on the Stock Markets Report. The Nigerian equities market has recorded its first loss in the new year as the All Share Index declined by 1.18% due to losses from Nigerian breweries, Dangote Cement and MTN Nigeria. All the five key sectors we track ended Tuesday session negative, with insurance taking the heaviest hit by 2.03%. Next is consumer goods, which shed 1.65%, while banking was down 1.07%. Total volume of deals traded today were higher compared to Monday's session as 666.7 million shares worth 6.51 billion naira changed hands in 5,711 transactions. Shares of Union Diagnostics and Clinical Services were the most traded, followed by Zenit Bank and UBA. Better Glass led 13 gainers by 9.67%, while Tourist Company of Nigeria led 21 other losers by 10%. Well, that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Layo Adeguki. Thanks, Layo. Meanwhile, global markets experienced a slight belt of weakness on Tuesday as traders cashed in on recent record highs and awaiting a long-anticipated U.S.-China trade deal and began to digest the first Wall Street earnings of the new year. But let's see today's numbers. But that's it on Business News. It's back to you, Ijeoma. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Thanks a lot, BC.
European leaders have triggered a formal dispute mechanism over Iran's breaches of key parts of the 2015 nuclear deal. The mechanism set out in the Article 36 of the deal involves the disputes being referred to a joint commission that will have a minimum of 15 days to resolve the issue. Here's Simon Pusey with more international stories and around the world in five. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom here in London. Several people have been detained in Iran after the accidental shooting down of a Ukrainian passenger plane with a missile. A spokesman said investigations into the incident were continuing but provided no details. The Ukrainian international airliner was brought down shortly after taking off from Tehran, killing all 176 people on board. Iran's Revolutionary Guards say the operator of a missile defense system had mistaken the aircraft for a U.S. cruise missile and fired at it. President Hassan Rouhani said the probe would be overseen by a special court and said the tragedy should not be blamed only on the individual who pulled the trigger. The judiciary should form a special court with a high-ranking judge and tens of experts. This is not an ordinary case. All the world will be watching this case of ours. Meanwhile, European powers have triggered a dispute mechanism over the nuclear deal with Iran after the country took a further step back from its commitments. Iran has suspended all limits on its production of enriched uranium, which can be used to make reactor fuel but also nuclear weapons. It has said it is responding to sanctions reinstated by the US when it withdrew from the accord in 2018. The UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said that if the current Iran nuclear deal that was negotiated by Barack Obama was going to end, then it should be replaced with a Trump deal. My point to our American friends is, look, somehow or other, we've got to stop the Iranians acquiring a nuclear weapon. I think that's the most, that's what the, the, the uh, Joint Collective Points Agreement does, the JCPOA. But if we're gonna get rid of it, then we need a replacement. Tens of thousands of people in the Philippines have been evacuated from the island where a volcano is thought to be on the brink of a massive eruption. Thousands of other residents living south of Manila sought refuge at temporary shelters after the volcano spewed ash and blanketed several towns into a grey landscape. More than 40,000 people have been evacuated from the island and the area immediately around it, which is normally a popular tourist spot. At one of the evacuation centres in Batangas province, hundreds of evacuees took shelter inside a covered gymnasium. Tal has erupted more than 30 times in the past five centuries, most recently in 1977. At least 57 people have been killed, with many others missing after avalanches in Pakistan-controlled Kashmir. Two Pakistani officials said many villagers were still stranded by the avalanches in the Nilum Valley area, following heavy rain that also triggered landslides. Many more people have been reported missing and feared dead as rescue efforts got underway. Here in Arangkel, a video filmed by local online media showed villagers digging in the snow trying to recover victims buried in the avalanche. The Disaster Management Authority declared an emergency in seven districts of the mineral-rich province and sought the army's help for relief and rescue operations. Russia's foreign minister has said there's been no definitive agreement on a ceasefire in Libya. Sergei Lavrov was speaking after talks in Moscow were held to try and negotiate a lasting peace plan in Libya. It came as the Turkish foreign minister said Khalifa Haftar's decision to not sign a ceasefire agreement with Libya's internationally recognized government shows who wanted war and who wants peace. Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez has held his first cabinet meeting with a view to building consensus among a number of different alliances. After a cliffhanger vote last week that saw socialist leader Sánchez chosen to form a new government, he announced one of Spain's largest cabinets in recent decades. It includes four deputy prime ministers, a first in modern Spanish history, three of whom are women. A sinkhole in northwestern China has swallowed a bus and several pedestrians, killing at least six people. Surveillance footage shown by China's state broadcaster showed people at a bus stop running from the collapsing road as the bus, standing almost vertically, sank halfway into the ground. The incident, which occurred outside a hospital in Xining, capital of Qinghai province, also triggered an explosion. Ten more people are missing. Sinkholes are not uncommon in China, where they are often blamed on construction work and the country's rapid pace of development. And finally, through good times and the bad, a couple in the Philippines decided to go ahead with their wedding in spite of the massive ash cloud hanging over them. 
in what has made for dramatic shots that have since gone viral on social media. Chino and Cat Paloma exchanged vows in Cavite province under a gigantic cloud of smoke and ash from the Tal volcano. It may not have been the safest wedding, but it did provide some pretty memorable moments and some spectacular photographs. And that's your international news around the world in five. Thanks a lot, Simon. Still ahead on the news at 10, FC Barcelona unveil former Real Betis coach Kike Setten as their new coach, with the mandate of restoring the club's iconic passing style. That's on Sports News. Please stay with us.